My name is Brad Siff. I am the founder and president of BioWave Corporation. I'd like to welcome you to our fifth webinar. The topic is on high frequency percutaneous neurostimulation, also known as PENS, for the treatment of chronic, acute, and postoperative pain. My background is as a uh, biomedical engineer, and I have worked at neurostimulation medical device companies for over 29 years. At the end of the presentation, uh, you can leave your questions down below uh, and we can answer everything during the Q&A period. So PENS is defined as percutaneous electrical nerve stimulation. BioWave PENS, which is our specific PEN system, is comprised of a BioWave Pro high-frequency neurostimulator or a BioWave Home high-frequency neurostimulator and our patented percutaneous electrode array. BioWave PENS is the only FDA-cleared PENS device on the market today. It is a patented deep tissue signal technology. It's not interferential current. It's not TENS. It's not a neuromuscular electrical stimulation device. There's no programming. The signals are optimized for passing through skin into deep tissue. The percutaneous electrode arrays are comfortable. They feel like Velcro to the touch, yet they provide a direct conductive pathway through the skin. This technology treats both nociceptive as well as neuropathic pain, so chronic, acute, or postoperative pain. And the result is three times better efficacy and uh, three times duration of carryover following a 30-minute treatment. So up to 72 hours of continuous pain relief from a single 30-minute treatment. And this system has built-in active feedback control. So the software actually prevents patients from receiving a burn. So it's a very safe device to use as well. So what it's the problem with existing stimulation technologies. Well, it has to do with the fact that skin has high impedance and high capacitance, and that prevents low frequency signals. And we define low frequency as one hertz to about 180 hertz in frequency. The electrical properties of skin prevent low frequency signals from passing through. So with a TENS unit, as you increase the intensity of, of the stimulation, you get kind of a noxious twitching sensation at the surface of the skin, which may act like a distraction to the pain, but those electrical signals from the TENS device cannot pass through the skin and get to where the pain nerves are down below that are conducting the pain signals up to the brain. So that's the fundamental problem uh, with conventional electrical stimulation. So we actually have two solutions to this problem. One is BioWave's patented high-frequency signal technology. So the BioWave device is operating at 4,062 hertz and a second signal at 3,940 hertz. And these two signals are added together inside the device. So the device then delivers both of these signals together to the first electrode. The signals pass through the electrode into deep tissue and an active electrical field forms inside the body. So as those high frequencies hit any point of polarization, for example, the plus charge sitting at the membrane of the C fiber, that plus charge multiplies the two high frequencies together. And the result is a new spectrum of frequencies that occur in a hemisphere approximately three and a half inches in diameter. So think of about the size of half of a grapefruit where this new active electrical field forms. And the frequencies in the new active electrical field are around 8,000 Hertz. One's at 4,062, one's at 3,940, one's at 8,002 Hertz. And then there's another field at uh, frequency at 122 hertz, which is low frequency, and the harmonics of 122, 244, 366, 488 hertz, but at declining intensities. So the key here and the invention is that the body creates a low frequency electrical field internally right at the surface of the nerve. So 
This is an alternating current device. So what does that mean? The device alternates the delivery of these two high frequencies. So we, they're first sent to the first electrode as you just see, saw, and now the, immediately the device delivers them to the second electrode. You get the active electrical field in the hemisphere. Like I said, think of half of a grapefruit beneath the second electrode. Now the device alternates these two high frequencies back and forth so quickly between the two electrodes, the body has, doesn't realize the signals have left either location. So the net effect is that the, it's as if you're treating two distinct locations of pain and the active electrical field forms in a hemisphere beneath the first electrode and in a hemisphere beneath the second electrode. So the electrodes must be placed directly over locations of pain. So it makes for a very simple, intuitive to use system. So what's happening in these hemispheres where that active electrical field forms? So first, the mechanism of action on the C fibers is that the electrical field actually uh, inhibits the sodium potassium ion exchange across the membrane of the C fiber. So it prevents the plus charge, which is the action potential from forming on the inside of the C fiber. So we're, the, the electrical field is actually inhibiting action potential propagation along that C fiber because the plus charge, the pain impulse is prevented from forming. On the A delta fibers, the effect of the electrical field is that hyposthesia is induced. It forms about five minutes into the treatment, much like a chemical anesthetic. And that hyposthesia lasts for approximately 20 to 30 minutes following a 30 minute duration treatment, kind of wears off linearly over, over that time period. Additionally, there's increased blood flow through that hemisphere, not from vasodilation, but because components of blood have a charge associated with them. When a charged particle enters an electrical field, it has to be accelerated through that field. So that's why we see increased blood flow through that volume of tissue. Additionally, muscle tissue is held in tension during the treatment. So the treatment feels like a deep, smooth pressure sensation, and it's much more comfortable than other forms of electrical stimulation. So patient compliance using the device is excellent. And then finally, uh, empirically, we see a very long carryover effect following the treatment up to 72 hours with percutaneous electrodes. And we believe that's because the signal technology is directly affecting the transmission of the pain signal along the C fibers and the A delta fibers. So it allows the body to be more efficient at producing its own endogenous opiates like endorphins, enkephalins, and serotonin. So the second solution to the problem is the electrode. And in this case, we have designed a patented percutaneous electrode array. So there is an array of 1,014 needles within a two and a half inch diameter patch. The needles are 0.74 millimeters in length. This, what we call this percutaneous electrode array, it bypasses the impedance and capacitance of the skin. It's providing a direct conductive pathway through the skin into deeper tissue. The greatest impedance is at, is at, the, out, is at the outer quarter to half millimeter of, of skin. So this is a, a wonderful way of making it easier for the high frequency nerve stimulation signals to pass into deep tissue. These electrodes are sterile. They're single use. As I said, they're comfortable. They really feel like Velcro to the touch. And it allows for the creation of this three and a half inch diameter hemisphere treatment area where this active electrical field forms in deep tissue. So it's important to understand the difference between electroacupuncture and conventional pens, as well as conventional pens and biowave pens with our percutaneous electrode arrays. So Electroacupuncture and conventional pens are almost identical. They use one to 10, three inch long needles. Um, there's no imaging used to guide needle placement and stimulation is limited 
to the tip of the needle in both cases. The difference is in electroacupuncture, needles are inserted along meridians in the body based on Eastern medicine, whereas with conventional pens, these same needles are inserted near where the pain nerves are that are conducting the pain signals to the brain. That's the significant difference. If you look at clinical literature, the response rate in patients is typically 30 to 40% uh, for both electroacupuncture and conventional pens. Now, if you compare conventional pens to biowave pens, the difference is we have a totally different needle array. Instead of having up to 10 three inch long needles, we have two two and a half inch diameter arrays that each contain 1,014 needles. And even though they're only three quarters of a millimeter in length, BioWave, the BioWave percutaneous electrode array actually has 3.3 square centimeters of needle surface area through the skin versus conventional pens. If you had all 10 needles, only two square centimeters of needle surface area through the skin. The needles in conventional pens and the percutaneous electrode arrays are placed directly over locations of pain, so where the pain nerves are that are conducting the pain signals. But the big difference is with conventional pens, the stimulation is, low, is limited to the tip of the needle, whereas with BioWave, you have a three and a half inch diameter hemisphere that's enveloping all the nerves uh, that are within that hemisphere. So with conventional pens, if the needle is not exactly in the right location where the nerve is conducting the pain signal, you're not gonna stimulate the nerve and you won't get an efficacious effect. But with BioWave, if, if this is the, where the pain presents, that's where we place the percutaneous electrode, there's an extremely high probability that we're gonna capture that nerve. So the placement doesn't have to be so precise, you just palpate directly over the location of pain and the electrode is placed over that location. We see about an 85% response rate uh, to the BioWave pens treatment versus only a 30 to 40% response rate with conventional pens. So the treatment regimen is, it's a 30 minute duration treatment in a pain or ortho clinic type of setting. Typically the, the regimen is six treatments over a two to three week period. In a sports setting, treatments typically occur more frequently. An athlete may get six treatments over two to three days to you know, accelerate uh, the reduction in pain and get that person rehabbing and returning to play more quickly. Um, doctors and patients report a cumulative benefit with multiple treatments. Um, in, in a, in a workers' compensation insurance may pay for an initial six treatments. That's both in a pain clinic setting or in a, in a professional sports setting. And subsequent treatments uh, may be preauthorized. Um, if you look at all of our clinical data, um, one, this is a very safe, effective way to treat pain. It's convenient, it's easy to use, there's no programming, um, it doesn't create any work restrictions. Uh, it's a way to accelerate patients returning to work. Obviously it's non-opioid. So if as a physician or healthcare provider, you're seeking ways to help your patient without narcotics, this is uh, a first course foundation type therapy uh, to do that. Um, and, the, you know, and outcomes are, are excellent. Uh, you, you will see significant improved patient outcomes. 85% of patients respond to this treatment. The typical reduction in vast pain score is between 50 to 75%. Um, this PENS treatment can provide up to 72 hours of continued pain relief, again, using the percutaneous electrodes. There's a significant improvement in function, increase in range of motion, reduction in stiffness and muscle spasm. Uh, activities of daily living are significantly improved. Um, and we see in all of our clinical studies up to about a 50% reduction in opioid consumption and other pain medication use, so which is very significant. We're gonna look at two specific PENS clinical studies uh, that were conducted. 
Uh, the first one was a randomized blinded controlled study for the treatment of chronic pain from grade three and grade four osteoarthritis in the knee. This was conducted at Rush University Medical Center in Chicago. There were 70 patients that were blinded and randomized into live and sham treatment groups. The inclusion criteria included, as I mentioned, grade three or grade four osteoarthritis of the knee. Uh, the patient had to have had chronic pain for more than three months. And the initial uh, visual analog pain score had to be greater than 30 millimeters on a 100 millimeter line. So greater than three out of 10 in terms of pain. One sterile percutaneous electrode array was placed over the most painful location on the knee. And that was paired with one non-invasive dispersive electrode pad placed in an opposing position. That dispersive pad is still active, just not nearly as active as the percutaneous electrode. A single treatment was performed and that treatment duration was for 30 minutes. The results showed that the summed pain intensity difference, the PID score, showed the live treatment was significantly better than the sham treatment uh, with P at 0 0.0361. The response to how much better do you feel was significantly better for live versus sham over 40 hours post-treatment. Again, this was just a single treatment and that was at P.0007. Um, the assessment for pain control was that 35% of the live group assessed pain control as well or complete versus only 7% of the sham group. That was point P of 0.039. And patient satisfaction at one week follow-up, 77% of the live group rated the treatment as good, very good or excellent, versus only 11% for the sham group as P equal to zero. Very interestingly for pain medication use, 54% of the live group reduced their pain medication consumption over a one week period. Now, normally patients would be doing treatments once a day or several, several days a week. This is one treatment over an entire week. Um, this group uh, reduced their pain medication consumption versus the sham group, zero patients reduced their pain medication consumption. So very uh, huge statistical difference. And then in function scores, Womack scores <clears throat> from pre-treatment to 48 hours post-treatment, live was better than sham in all categories for pain, stiffness, and function. And this study was published in a journal called Orthopedics in June of 2007. The second study uh, that we'll talk about is, was a randomized placebo-controlled study on the treatment of post-operative pain following total knee replacement surgery at the Hospital for Special Surgery in New York City. There are 23 total patients randomized into the experimental group and the control group. The inclusion criteria included patients that underwent total knee replacement surgery. Surgery was performed under an epidural anesthesia use, utilizing a standard medial parapetellar approach under tourniquet. The TKRs were cemented posterior stabilized knees following completion of surgery, two sterile percutaneous electrode arrays, PEAs as we call them, were placed on the medial and lateral aspects of the operated knee around the level of the joint line. The knee was covered with a sterile dressing. The ends of the electrodes were accessible outside of the dressing. There were eight treatments performed in total, two per day, separated typically by about eight to 12 hours over the four days that the patients were in the hospital. Each treatment preceded CPM use by 30 minutes. Uh, the treatment duration was also 30 minutes. The results uh, show that there was a significant reduction in vast pain scores from before to after in uh, the experimental group. Uh, P was less than 0.05, and there was no change in pain scores in the control group over the four days. There was a, a significant trend toward reduced opioid use in the experimental group which only used 10 milligrams of morphine via PCA as compared to the control group, which used 18 milligrams of morphine via PCA. So almost half the amount of morphine was used in the, uh, in the active treatment group versus the control group. This was a podium presentation 
that was done at the Eastern Orthopedic Association annual meeting in October 2008. And it was a poster presentation at the AA, the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons annual meeting in February of 2009. I would also mention that um, because the treatment was performed prior to CPM use, we found that it was much easier for the patients to be on the CPM machine and get through that entire range of motion than those in the control group who had no uh, specific targeted pain relief uh, for their knee. So there are ways that we can focus the active electrical field by changing the types of electrodes that are paired with each other. So if you pair two percutaneous electrodes together, we call that the B set. B stands for bilateral pain or two locations of pain. We're using two same size percutaneous electrodes. The impedance through the skin is equal at each electrode where it intersects with the skin. And so this set is used for treating two locations of pain or it could be for treating the origin of pain and a pain site that's most proximal to the origin. That would be, for example, for radiculopathy. We'll show an example of that. Or if these electrodes are one inch apart from one another, the uh, active electrical fields intersect in, beneath them and you're really treating one large region of pain. Um, so examples, your classic example would be for bilateral lumbar pain. If the pain presents three inches to the left of the spine and three inches to the right of the spine, that's exactly where we're gonna place those two percutaneous electrodes. If someone has a radiculopathy, in this case, a right side radiculopathy, one electrode is placed at the origin, let's call this L5, but we're about half an inch to the right of center. So we're capturing where the pain signals are coming off the spine at that location. And then the second electrode is placed in the most proximal location uh, to the origin. So the first location that the patient feels pain, in this case, it typically might be in the buttock. Of course, that electrode has to be on the skin. We couldn't get the model to pose without shorts on. <laughs> so um, that's a typical presentation for uh, sciatica or, or lumbar radiculopathy. Um, one large area of pain, for example, might be if a patient has pain throughout the entire shoulder, one electrode could be placed on the posterior side of the shoulder, one on the anterior side of the shoulder. Generally, uh, we want those electrodes over locations of pain, but this placement will get a, a very good capture of the entire shoulder joint uh, by placing the electrodes in that fashion. Another might be if a patient had uh, bilateral SI joint pain, we can place these electrodes one inch apart and we're gonna capture the entire sacral region, the, the whole SI joint. It's a wonderful treatment for uh, SI joint pain. Now, but what happens if the patient only has a single location of pain? So to treat a single location of pain, we pair a larger area non-invasive electrode with a single percutaneous electrode. The area is larger, so the density of the electrical field is less under the, the, the rectangular electrode. And the impedance is much greater because there's no needles, it's just a hydrogel. So the sensation felt by the patient will be much greater under the percutaneous electrode as compared to the non-invasive electrode. So we, the non-invasive electrode won't act as a distraction to how high an intensity the patient can get to under the percutaneous electrode, which is directly over the location of pain. In addition, we wanna place the non-invasive electrode in the most comfortable place to receive stimulation. Because again, we don't want it to be a distraction to what the patient feels under the percutaneous electrode at the pain site. So a bony prominence is always going to be the most comfortable location where we wanna place that uh, single electrode. This again is used for treating a single location of pain. So an example, if you were treating a trigger point located in the trapezius, as in this first image, uh, we place that percutaneous electrode directly over that location of pain. The bony prominence comfortable location for the rectangular electrode is right along the spine of scapula. In the case of plantar fasciitis, um, the, and the pain presents right at that location uh, in the heel and arch area, 
that percutaneous electrode is directly over that location of pain. The non-invasive uh, rectangular electrode can be placed on the lateral calcaneus or it could also be placed over the lateral malleolus. Those are both good locations that are comfortable to receive stimulation. Some pro tips during the treatment. It's important we can get deeper penetration of the electrical field if the tissue that's being treated is a little bit taut or a little bit in tension. So if, you're, if we're treating the lumbar area, we actually prefer the torso to be at 90 degrees to the legs. If a patient has difficulty sitting because of pain, they could be lying on their back with their knees up or on their side with their knees pulled in. Um, that, so that, that gets you deeper penetration of the electrical field into the lumbar region. If we're treating the cervical area of uh, the neck, we want the head tilted forward. So the tissue on the back of the neck is a little bit more taut. If we're treating the shoulders, typically um, a neutral position is fine with the patient sitting. And if we're treating the knee, typically if the knee can be bent at 90 degrees, we get deeper penetration of the electrical field. If it's post-operatively and the patient doesn't have that range of motion yet, that's okay. Um, but if, uh, if you can get some angle of bend in the knee, we will get deeper penetration of the electrical field. Um, additionally, motion during the treatment can change the location and position of the electrical field. So if you're treating a shoulder, and someone moves their, their shoulder a little bit or rotates their arm supination versus pronation, that can actually change the intensity and the slight focus of the electrical field in the shoulder. So if the patient moves a little bit and they say, wow, that's hitting the spot, that's a good thing. So it's a little fine tuning of the treatment. Let's talk about the setup for the procedure. Um, so first of all, the treatment can be performed by just about any healthcare provider, a, a, a physician, a nurse, a physical, a, a physician assistant, medical assistant, physical therapist, athletic trainer, chiropractor, um, acupuncturist. Uh, so uh, typically, uh, for billing purposes, a physician should be somewhere in the premises, uh, but the treatment does not have to be done by a physician. Um, so you're gonna determine which set of percutaneous electrodes to use. If the patient has two locations of pain, it's the B set. If the patient has a single location of pain, it's the E set with one that has one percutaneous electrode. So you're gonna palpate to find the center of the pain location. You're gonna mark that spot with a Sharpie. You're gonna take an alcohol prep and clean the skin as, and disinfect the skin as if you were gonna give an injection. Um, Make sure you don't completely wipe away the Sharpie mark because you're gonna use that as a landmark now for placing the percutaneous electrode. There's a plastic cup that protects the needles in the percutaneous electrode. You're gonna gently peel that off of the electrode. Don't hold the wire coming off the electrode, hold the edge of the hydrogel, that black perimeter that you see in, in the, the image in the, in the middle row and gently peel the cup off. You don't wanna bend or kink the metal array. So just take your time and peel it slowly. It comes off very easily. Then you're gonna take the electrode and you're gonna center it over the Sharpie mark and place it down. And to uh, insert the percutaneous needle array through the skin, we have to apply about 10 pounds of force using your two thumbs pressing perpendicular to the surface of that electrode on the back. And we're gonna apply pressure three times. Now the needles don't hurt, they really don't. They feel like, like I said, it feels like Velcro to the touch, but you are applying pressure directly over the pain site. So just let your patient know you're gonna press in that location. It may be a little uncomfortable because, because you're pressing over the pain site. You press for a couple of seconds, uh, with your thumbs together directly over the center of the needle ray to insert the needles. Then you're gonna press with your thumbs slightly apart at 12 o'clock and six o'clock, still over the needle ray, not over the black uh, hydrogel area, but still over the needle ray. Press 
again with about 10 pounds of force, get all those needles inserted through the epidermis. And then the third time is with the, with the thumbs at three o'clock and nine o'clock, you're gonna press with 10 pounds of force and insert those needles in those locations through the epidermis. So the idea is we want all the needles inserted through the epidermis. Uh, we don't want to leave any hot spots with needles sitting uh, at the surface of the skin. Um, this takes literally about six seconds, seven seconds to do. Now you're gonna take the lead wire cable from the device and the two blue connectors at the end of the lead wire cable can connect to either blue connector at the end of each electrode. There's no plus or minus, there's no black or red leads, um, and they just click together. Uh, then you're gonna turn on the stimulator, the startup screen will read 0.0% and you're all set to begin the treatment. There's no programming, it's very simple. This literally takes about three minutes to do the setup. Now, when we to start the treatment, the patient always controls their own comfort level. So the patient presses the plus button on the device, that increases the intensity from 0% to 0.5%. And the, the patient needs to keep pressing the plus button to increase the intensity so that the sensation felt by the patient is strong, typically up to tolerance, but still comfortable. Okay, the body adapts to the electrical field. And as it adapts, the sensation will begin to diminish. As it diminishes, the patient needs to keep pressing the plus button to keep that sensation at a strong uh, but comfortable level. The number is not so important. The intensity number on the screen is not so important. What's important is that the sensation the patient feels is a steady, strong sensation through the entire 30 minute treatment. Um, so typical examples of intensity levels might be in the first five to 10 minutes, a patient might be around 15% to 25% intensity. Depends what part of the body you're on. We'll talk about that in a second. By the end of the 30 minute treatment, most patients are somewhere between 25% and 50% intensity. If you were treating those same locations with non-invasive electrodes, the intensity might be at twice the level that you would get to as compared to a percutaneous level. You just, you, you just don't need to get up nearly as high and you, you also can't tolerate nearly as high a level. And it's because the impedance is so low and it's so easy for the signals to get into deep tissue, you're not, you just don't need that extra intensity level. Um, so when, you, when we look at um, different parts of the body, for example, knees, ankle, and feet, you can tolerate much higher level of intensity than other parts of the body. So with percutaneous electrodes, the typical range at the end of the 30 minute treatment, the patient might be at anywhere from 30% to 50% intensity on the screen, on the device. That again, it's approximately half of where they might be with non-invasive electrodes. For the lumbar and thoracic area of the back, as well as the shoulders, most patients can tolerate a medium level of stimulation. So the typical range that patients get to with percutaneous electrodes is between 25% and 40%. For neck, elbow, and wrist, that tend, those tend to be more sensitive areas to receive stimulation. The typical intensity range reached might be only 15% to 30% intensity at the end of the 30 minute treatment. Generally speaking, we want a patient to try and get to 15% intensity by the end of the 30 minute treatment. So the electrical field, that hemisphere is getting deep enough to encompass wherever the pain nerves are that are conducting those pain signals. Every patient's physiology is different. So some patients can tolerate a little higher intensity, some patients tolerate a little less intensity, but these ranges that are presented are just roughly what, what's typical. Uh, again, the number's not important. What's important is that the patient keeps that sensation they feel at a strong up to tolerance, but comfortable level throughout the entire 30 minute treatment. At the end of the treatment, when the countdown timer reaches zero minutes and zero seconds, the intensity immediately drops to 0%. 
The maximum intensity reached during the treatment is displayed on the LCD. This is on the BioWave Pro device, and it may be noted in the doctor's notes. You wanna gently peel the electrodes off of the skin. You wanna take the needle sides of the electrodes and place them together so you don't touch them. There's, there's uh, blood droplets on those needles. They, they get disposed of and typically in sharps disposal. Um, what's typical is you will see a one and a half inch diameter pink circle on the skin as in the image here with 1,014 dimple marks and that what's appearing at the treatment site. Approximately half of your patients will have several tiny drops of blood present, five, six, seven tiny little drops. You can clean this with an alcohol prep with a, some sterile gauze. No dressing is necessary. The pink circle typically resolves within about two hours. If a patient has very sensitive skin or thin, thinner skin, the pink circle may take up to 48 hours to resolve. That's the, the longest we've seen but this is completely normal. From a reimbursement standpoint, workers' compensation will reimburse for initial six PENS treatments in most states, whether it's in a pain clinic setting or a professional sports setting, uh, there's, there's very good reimbursement through workers' compensation and subsequent PENS treatments may also be pre-authorized. Um, Automobile and personal injury are also very good payers in many states. And medical necessity, very important, must be stated in the doctor's notes uh, in order to get reimbursement. Um, so that, those are some of the key uh, points with respect to reimbursement. So in summary, PENS has proven efficacy uh, and it's a combination of the advanced high frequency signal technology that's patented and proprietary to BioWave's devices combined with the patented percutaneous electrode array technology. And those devices together can provide up to 72 hours of continuous pain relief for treatment. And there's definitely a cumulative effect from multiple treatments over time. And the, one of the great things about this technology is it's so simple to use. The electrodes go over locations of pain. There's no programming of the device. It's literally a power button and a plus button. Uh, so, and additionally, the, the treatment is very comfortable. As we said, the uh, electrical field feels like a deep, smooth pressure sensation. The electrodes themselves feel like Velcro to the touch. So patient compliance is excellent. Reimbursement is attractive. There are BioWave Pens training videos and support at our website, biowave.com slash support. And you can reach any of our clinical uh, specialists or customer concierge uh, specialists at 1-877-BIOWAVE. That's 1-877-246-9283. So thank you very much. Um, if you have any questions, please go down to the question box on toward the bottom of the screen uh, and enter, enter them there. And uh, I look forward to answering any questions that you have. Thank you.